Technology is currently something that we see as separate to ourselves. My phone sits in my pocket, my laptop sits at my desk, it is technology, I am biology. But we really need to begin to change our understanding of what technology is and what technology can be because technology and biology are beginning to be intertwined in fascinating ways. Here's Sam. Computers, phones, tech seems obsessed with pressing more and more incredible gizmos into less and less space. Never more so than in the field of nanorobotics, engineering on a truly micro scale. Take this as a pretty basic, quite funky, um, sort of cruel example. Tweet roach. Artist Brittany Ransom has given this otherwise normal cockroach a backpack with electrodes connected to its antenna. When you tweet it to turn left or right, the chip sends a signal to the antenna confusing the roach into thinking it's hit something, so it turns left or right. But a cockroach is pretty big by robot standards. They get much, much smaller. First, there was this Israeli effort, a robot just a millimetre wide, which, for medical purposes, is more than small enough to play about in your internal organs. Then Swiss scientists created this, a robot so small it can be injected into the eye without anaesthetic. Although we're not really sure why you'd want to. But eventually there comes a stage where electronics just doesn't cut it. You simply can't get small enough. And that's where you start playing with DNA. Scientists around the world have started engineering tiny bacterial robots, magnetically controlled by computers which, when ganged together, can perform impressive feats of engineering. This is a swarm of 5,000 of them, created by the Nanorobotics Laboratory of the École Polytechnique de Montréal in Canada. But as departmental director Sylvain Martel explains, these aren't just toys. They're being engineered to beat cancer. We use those bacteria as the carrier. So what happened is we encase uh, drug molecules in the liposome, and liposome is like a nanometer size bag, if you want. There are special types of bacteria which has a nano compass inside, and what we do is we just orient like a driving wheel, if you want. We just drive it towards a specific point, which is a tumor. And once they're there, they die, and then they deliver their, their drugs. Other researchers are looking at using similar technology to repair damaged arteries, and in future they could even be used to supplement damaged nerves and muscles. They could repair bad hearing and eyesight, or they could simply improve on nature's efforts. Yes, these little bots could use the same techniques to make you faster, stronger and more efficient. Well, I think everything's possible, but uh, before we increase the capacity of human stuff, I think that's going to take some time. But that would be, uh, that would be a, logical, a logical path, if you want. But there's a problem. What if these bots were used for negative purposes, to administer drugs or encourage the production of harmful hormones that changed your behaviour or how you thought without you even knowing it? It would be an immensely powerful biological weapon. There's also, as with all things computerised, the risk of disaster. What if, for example, the programme controlling the nanobots crashed? Or what if the bacteria rapidly evolved into a new strain, which led to them confusing the tumour they were supposed to be treating, for example, with a totally healthy part of the body? And if they did go wrong, how would you shut them down? But Sylvain says, for the moment, they're being pretty careful about not letting the bugs take over. Well, in this case, we don't have to worry because the bacteria we use uh, die after about 40 minutes and they, they need two hours to replicate. But if you're talking about in the longer term, that might be an issue. We do a lot of tests on the immune system response and things like that. And that's very important because we will not be allowed to inject in the future in humans if we don't prove that it's relatively safe to inject those bacteria, then we'll not be allowed to uh, Humans. It seems an important and innovative cure for cancer may be around the corner, but nanobots building implants inside you, taking over your body? Well, that's probably still more science fiction than science fact. What would mm. you have done? If the technology was right, I would go for the sort of chip in the brain. I, I, the chip in the brain? I would. What would, I, it, what would it do? Augment digital information into my own reality. It's like Google Glass, as you all know what, well, if you don't know what Google Glass is, Google it. Um, but it'd be like Google Glass, but without the glasses, I guess. And I guess if I could turn it off whenever I wanted as well, and I just didn't have to wear the glasses, I probably would go for it. I just want to run and jump really fast. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not. I'm not a man who needs net connections in my brain. I don't need my cerebellum wired to Amazon or eBay. Other online retailers and sections of your brain are available. I just want to run and jump and have a lovely time. Ideally, if I could jump over a river. He just wants I to jump. Be happy. Just jump over a river. I'm a country lad. I like rivers. I like jumping.